Alright guys, so today's video is going to be all about video with your Z5, which I think is a fantastic camera for newborn, family, uh, even weddings. And it's at a great price point too. So if you're wanting to add little video clips uh, to wow your clients and separate yourself from all the other photographers in your town, this is the video for you. We're going to go through the basics. Now, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and download the free download. I'm gonna put it on the screen and in the description box below. Um, it's gonna have more in-depth information about what we go over in this video to try and help you understand a little bit better. And so go ahead and pause the video, download that, and while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. And sharing is caring, guys. Make sure and share the video, like it, comment. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that. And we are going to jump right in. We are going to be uh, going to, you have to flip your switch to the video camera and then you go into the menu. Now we're gonna go into frame size, frame rate and I'm gonna tell you what that means. So we went to the video camera and then we come down to frame size, frame rate. All right, people talk a lot about 4K. This is 4K, 3840 by 2160. What they're talking about is resolution, which is how many pixels that you actually have. Um, I like to shoot 1080p, and the reason is because on the Z5, I can go up to 60 frames per second, which I will explain in a minute. But that's basically your resolution. And the higher the pixels, the higher the resolution. So now let's talk about your frames per second, your FPS, okay? A lot of filmmakers, when they're filming people doing action, they will film in 24. This means you have 24 frames per second. So if you were gonna film someone speaking to someone else, like if you were filming vows or a wedding ceremony or a family talking to one another, then you would choose 24 and that will be the closest to film and the most cinematic. If you were uh, trying to get something a little bit slower, so just a little dreamier, then you would choose 30. Um, so it wouldn't match up when you go to edit it, and this is more advanced, but just this is basic so that you know when you film. Um, if, if you film 30 frames per second and you put it in a 24 frames per second timeline, it's not gonna match up with people speaking. So 30 frames per second is if you have a baby in your studio and you're trying to do a short little highlight reel, the 30 frames per second just kind of like gets the bumps out of the way, the shaking is gone. Now, if you want to do slow-mo, that's when you go up to about 60 frames per second. Now, it seems strange that the more frames per second, the slower it'll be, but if you think about it, you have to fill in gaps. So that's why you have to have more frames per second to be able to lengthen out the timeline basically to get that really dreamy slow motion. So basically you're, what you're going into is going to determine your frames per second. Um, and your resolution, that's largely determined by what you're gonna ultimately do with the video. If it's gonna be a wedding video, then I would film at 4K or 1080p. Okay, now you can also access your frame size, frame rate from the I menu. And you'll see right here, 1080, 60, right there. And then you can just scroll over and choose whatever you want. Now, if I was gonna make a highlight film that was maybe two to three minutes for say a newborn shoot or a family shoot, I would probably film in 1080p because um, it's not gonna, I don't really want large file sizes for that and it's going to look gorgeous anyway. Um, and I would probably film in 60 just to get that beautiful slow-mo. Now, if the family was talking to one another and it was something that, you know, they were writing letters to one another, um, like if you were doing a wedding, then that's when you film in 24p. Okay, so now that we got that, the basics out of the way, Let's say that we are going into a family shoot and filming at 60p to get a little highlight reel. We've got our frame size and frame rate. Now, what are our other settings gonna be? Well, our shutter speed is going to wanna be double our actual frame rate. So if our frame rate is 60, 
then our shutter speed is going to be 1 /25. Well, 120 technically, but we don't have that on the camera. So it's going to be 1 25th. Um, so if we were, say, shooting at 24p, then our shutter speed, we would want to make 50th of a second um, because there's not a 48. So it's just a 1 40th and then 1 50th. So your shutter speed is not going to change unless you change your frame rate. And that's a very, very important. You want to keep that because if your shutter speed is too fast or too slow, it's going to look too jittery or disconnected or something like that. And you don't want that. Okay. So now that we have our frame rate and our shutter speed figured out, now we need to figure out our aperture. So really fast crash into the aperture. Um, the lower the number, that means that the aperture is going to be wider. It means that more light is going to come in, but it also means that you're going to have a shallower depth of field. So if you want that dreamy look with a blurry background, you're going to want to go with a lower number. Now, if you want more in focus, then you're going to go to a higher number. However, it's going to let less light in. Um, which brings us to now. Okay. So with the, the, when it comes to, when I do photography, I will say, oops, I will say somewhere like that. When it comes to video, however, since it's actually moving and fluid and you have a subject that you, that you're looking at because it, you know, it's moving around. Um, I might actually go up to something like that. And then with even longer lenses, like the 500 millimeter, I will go up to that when I'm shooting like a wedding or something. But if you're doing this additional for family or kids or whatever, then um, you could just stay around, you know, a smaller number and let a little bit more light in. And the reason is because you don't want to go very high on your ISO, which is the last setting we're going to talk about. As and the aperture is found with this dial on the front here. That's how you change that. The ISO is found here and you press that button in and you uh, move the shutter speed dial or the back dial around. Now with your ISO, you want to stay at the lowest ISO that you can because that is going to provide you the highest dynamic range in your colors and your shadows and highlights. And the way that you get away with having a low ISO and a low aperture or a wide aperture outside in sunny light is to use a variable neutral density filter that you would attach to the front here of your lens. And then you can actually make it darker or lighter depending on how much you slide it around. The next thing that we want to talk about are focus zones. Okay. Well, your focus mode, um, I keep mine in AFF, which is full time autofocus. Uh, when I'm doing something, when I'm just adding little clips to family shoots, newborns, whatever, um, you'll want to do manual focus if um, you're doing like weddings and things like that, which is a little bit more uh, advanced when we go into how to do that. But um, to keep it easy, if you keep it on full time autofocus, then the camera will continuously try to focus. If you keep it on AFC, then the camera will focus only when you hold the button down. Um, and I'm going to show this to you in an example, but for right now, we're going to put AFF. And then as far as the AF area mode goes, um, I like to keep it on auto AF and I will, we'll step outside and I'll show you why. Okay. So now we're out here with the Z5 and we are going to go into AF area mode. Oops. No, nope, we are going to go into focus mode full-time AFF, and I'm going to show you what that does. Come closer, sweetie. Okay, so this mode is going to keep following him. Come closer and smile. Come closer. And it's going to keep him in focus the whole time. Now scoot this way just a bit. It's going to keep following him. And that's why I love the AFF. But we can also go to AF continuous, which also has its advantages. Come here, sweetie. Almost done. Okay, so the only time it's actually going to focus, walk backwards. 
So it's going to keep following him, but it's not going to focus until I hit the button and continue to hold it down. So come up here. Not that close. Well, no, not that close. No, not that far back. There you go. So it's going to keep focusing on him. And then when I let go, it's not going to focus any longer. Go back. It'll follow, but not focus. So we're going to keep it in AFF. We're going to go to area mode, single point AF. Okay. Whatever that red dot is Ow. on, it's going to focus on in AFF. Okay. Now... Let's go to wide area square. So whatever that red square's on is what it's going to focus on. Okay. And then the next option is AF area long, which is a rectangle. And it does the exact same thing. Now, scoot back a little bit. Right there, right there. Okay. Now this one's a little difficult because it's trying to judge between the out edges and the middle. So, so see now, and that's one of the reasons why I love to keep it on AFF, um, auto area AF, and just you choose your spot. Come forward. Come on. Come about right here. See, now he went out of the frame. Let's see if it picks him back up. Go over there. And it picks him back up. There we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know your questions or comments. Um, and I will see you guys next time.